Good morning and welcome to Legacy Baptist Church this morning. So glad to see you here and to be part of our service today. And we look forward to having a great service in God's house today. And this morning as we begin, we're going to be reading in Romans chapter 12. So if you'd like to join along with me, Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to be reading verses 9 to 21. And we look forward to having uh, it's a great day today as we finish up our missions month. We're glad to have the coats with us today. And uh, we're going to just have a, a great day in the Lord's house. Romans 12, verse 9, the Bible says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it has written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And here in this passage, Paul gives us a list of things of how we ought to be living our lives. And especially during this missions month, as we consider our role as believers and as we treat one another as Christians... We are called to love without division. We're to abhor from evil, to stay away from evil and to cleave to that which is good. And as believers, we're, not, we're, we're to live peaceably one with another. We're to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. We are to weep with those who are weeping. We're supposed to be there for one another and live peaceably among our brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is where it begins. And this is where our work as missions begins here in the church as we serve one another and we try to be there for one another. And as much as sometimes we want to take things into our own hand, Paul here is saying, even the least of those in our lives, those who we consider enemies, we are to feed them, care for them, give unto their need. And as that begins here in our own hearts and in our own church, that then goes and flows through us out into the world as well. So we have a great opportunity that begins right here in our hearts and in our church. So we're glad that you're here with us today as brothers and sisters in Christ as we open the word today and as we seek to worship God, seek to worship God I hope that you have open hearts today to see how God will use you uh, today. So let's pray as we begin our service. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful once again to be in your house and we're thankful to see uh, the church filling up and uh, have those joining us online and I pray as uh, we begin the service, Lord, as we sing these songs of worship to you. I pray that we do it from a joyful and a right heart as we sing these praises. And I pray as your word is open, Lord, that you'd speak to hearts through Brother Coates and that a change would be seen in our lives as we leave this place today and that as we leave, we'd be drawn closer to you than we came in. And we pray these things now in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, church, let's stand up for our first hymn, Brethren, We Have Met to Worship. Brethren, We Have Met to Worship. All right, on the first verse. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit
Christ will gird himself and serve us with sweet manna all around. Amen. You may be seated. And who thought that winter was over? It's his fault. Right there. Uh, no, he showed me pictures last night. We were here setting the. Well, he was setting up things of his display, and he showed me pictures of uh, where he lives. I've been there in November, and there was snow there, and there's still snow there now. And there was a pile, and he was showing me pictures how he drove down. There was snow everywhere, and we looked out, and there was no snow. And I woke up this morning, and there's snow. I don't know if I like him much anymore, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, I know some folks probably looked out the window and said, we're watching online this morning, and I hope you are, and you're watching us, and I hope you'll be encouraged as well. Uh, but we had a great time yesterday at Man Up. Uh, there was 330 men at the Man Up conference in Bethel. It was a wonderful time. Great preaching, great fellowship, and uh, they're planning on doing it again next year. It'll be Friday and Saturday. This year they just did Saturday, the 24th, 25th, and obviously we'll let you a lot, lot closer to that when we get there, but it was a great time, and like I said, glad to have the, well, I don't know if I'm glad to have the coats now, but no, I'm kidding, uh, but I'm glad they're here. They made it safe and sound, and we're excited about what the Lord's going to do, uh, use them in, in Quebec and what the Lord would have for them, so we're excited that they're here, and uh we uh, look forward, and you're going to be down here for a little while, too. I'm sure I'm probably taking some of your notes away from later, but they're continuing to raise in support, so let's be praying for them as they do that. And then uh, Tuesday, uh, podcast, uh, on our church podcast, we'll be examining well, hell. What is hell? What is it all about? Uh, we hear it quite frequently in people's language as they speak and talk, uh, but the Bible has a lot to say about hell, and it's not a curse word. It's a place you don't want to go. And uh, so we're going to look into that for a little bit on Tuesday for a podcast, examine what the scriptures say. And then Wednesday, we're back to Zoom Bible study. Uh, so we've had a bunch of missionaries uh, this month on, on uh, Facebook on, on Wednesday nights. Uh, but now we're back to Zoom Bible study, and that'll be at 7 p.m. Uh, so if you need details about that, please let us know. But we'd love to have you join in. No Facebook devotion this coming Saturday, uh, April 10th is um, True North activity, your cardboard engineer's activity. All right, so that's after the morning service. Uh, as per normal, we usually have stuff on Sunday afternoons for you. Uh, so that's what it is. So come with your engineer's cap on and uh, look forward to that activity. And then uh, Easter weekend is just uh, not too far away now. Uh, on April the 14th, a Thursday night, at 7 p.m., we will be having a focus on Calvary. So we look forward to that service. Love to have you out uh, for 7 p.m. And then on Sunday, obviously, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, uh, we look forward to being together and worshiping and praising the Lord's name uh, for all he's done. And a great time to invite someone to come out as well. And then on April 23rd, uh, we're going to have a training day here at the church. Uh, start at 10, but you can come a little bit early. We'll have coffee. Uh, we'll have donuts from Krispy Kreme here ready to get you going, get that sugar high, so you'll be zoned right in for the teaching training time. Uh, we have some sessions and then some ones that are uh, broken off as well about children's ministry, outreach ministry, things of that nature. And then we'll provide lunch for you, and we get a little bit closer. Uh, we'll let you know exactly what that lunch is. I know some of you are waiting if you're going to come or not, depending on the lunch. But at any rate, uh, we'll look forward to that. And then Bear Youth Conference, uh, teenagers, we're going up on the 29th. So if you'd like to come along, please let us know, and we'll make sure we have room for you to get up there. Uh, we know we've been praying for Brother Wes, a missionary to St. Lucia. And this week, uh, the Carl just went through all the tests. No blockages at all, so that's wonderful. Uh, he told Wes that he has electrical problem with his heart that a pacemaker will take care of. So they already uh, put the pacemaker in, and he's home now uh, in Durham area. He still he can't go back to St. Lucia yet. Uh, but he's resting, and the Lord just worked it out. Uh, I mean, I found out some more information this week. Uh, he had that heart attack. He was resting in the hospital in St. Lucia, and uh, they were like, oh, we don't know if we could send you back. We might have to uh, med medevac you out, and that was going to be a lot of money. And the Lord allowed his heart rate to go up and things, and they said, no, you can travel commercially. He gets home within 12 hours. His heart rate is 30 beats. I mean, he was really close to passing on. And 
just the healthcare system here. Sometimes we don't like it, uh, but praise the Lord that we, we do have, and they were able to help them out, figure it all out. What a, what a difference a week makes. You know, it's incredible. Uh, last week, we were praying for him as he was flying up, right? He flew up last Sunday. So uh, thank the Lord for that, and we're thankful for all our missionaries, and we've been focusing, obviously, this month upon our missionaries, and we're so thankful for each one. And uh, they, they face all kinds of challenges, health, challenges at church and ministry and their own families. So we're going to take this time right now to pray for our missionaries as they minister to, uh, to folks around the world. Dear Jesus, thank you for, uh, Lord, our missionaries. Thank you for the mission-mindedness of our church. And Lord, the funds have been given, the prayers have been offered, the, the help, the assistance that's been given over the years. And Lord, I pray that you be with our missionaries uh, in various fields, from places that are very open to places very closed. And Lord, as they spread the gospel, as they sow the seed of the gospel, Lord, I pray you bless them encourage them. Uh, Lord, there's no doubt there's enemies at play who would like to discourage and see them leave the field. Lord, I pray you encourage their hearts, and thank you for the wonderful report with Brother Wes, and Lord, I pray you could help him to uh, regain his strength after this time, uh, and uh, Lord, to see able him to go back to St. Lucia. I know that's where his heart is, and Lord, that's where he wants to pastor those dear folks there in St. Lucia, and Lord, I pray you just watch over him, give him the strength he needs, and be with each and every one of our missionaries. And Lord, I thank you for them. And thank you for this church, I'm willing to help and support them. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I church will stand up for our next hymn, Onward, Christian Soldiers. On the first verse, together. On the first verse. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the
for our next hymn, Work for the Night is Coming, Work for the Night is Coming. Word brought good. 
that's a testimony of your own life that God's word has changed your life. It changed your life in salvation and changed your life from day to day. It's a challenge, exhortation, encouragement, and so many other words that we could use to describe it as well. So, so thankful for that. And as we finish up, this is our last Sunday of March, even though it doesn't look like it out there. But at any rate, uh, we are finishing up our missions month. And uh, we had talked about, I mentioned it at the beginning of the month, our Faith Promise missions cards. I preach about Faith Promise at the beginning of the month. Take one of those and pray about what the Lord would have you to do. We're so thankful and praise the Lord that uh, we were able to give $82,000 last year to missions. We're excited about that. And we're praying that we can do a little bit more and that we could help more missionaries like Brother Coates and his family in Quebec. And they need the support. They're worthy of it. And Quebec is a needy place. I spent uh, a week there in uh, November. And it was one of the very first times. I've driven through Quebec so many times, but I actually stayed there for a week and did some preaching for pastors and things, tried to be a blessing. And boy, does that area need Christ. Lots of churches. Lots of buildings but there's not the preaching of the Word of God, and it's just a massive need. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm taking stuff that he's going to talk about. So come on up here, sir. We're so glad that you're here, Brother Coates. Preach the Word for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Alcock and Legacy Baptist Church. It's a, man, it's a blessing to be here. I hope your heart is stirred already this morning. Amen. I know mine is. Uh, to be honest, it's, I don't know if the word is reverse culture shock. It's a bit of a change being back in English territory. We've been in Quebec now for, for eight months, and I praise the Lord for that, and I would not have time. I'd, I'd take the whole service just telling the whole story. So if you want, go to our YouTube page, Coach to Quebec. You can see all our travel videos. You can see the whole story of how God worked. And I pray that would be a blessing to you. But, you know, now that we've been in Quebec eight months and living in French tor- territory, being even even my wife, she doesn't speak French yet. Even she, you know, she wanted to call the hotel uh, uh, front desk to ask for something. And she's like, but I, but I can't call. I can't speak. It's like, we're in English territory. <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah. Hey, we need... <laughs> You know, so it's 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 different, but it's just a blessing to be here, a blessing to be back in church. And don't get me wrong, I love our church in, in Quebec, and I love the services, and I praise the Lord, I'm able to understand the services in French. But just being back is just refreshing for us. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, we've been blessed already, and I pray that we can be a blessing to you as well. Um, that song, and just thinking about that, God's word changes lives, and I thought only God's word changes lives. What a powerful truth! And uh, we're going to speak in, in a minute here. I'm going to, you know, give a little bit about our family first. But, you know, we're going to be speaking about truth today. And uh, the fact is God's word is the only source of truth in this world. No, no truth exists outside of the word of God. It's the, it's the ultimate truth. And to, to think that the power of this to change lives, wow. But we're not preaching yet. We'll, we'll, we'll hold that off. But, you know, that song was a blessing. So thank you for those who are involved in that. That was truly a blessing and uh, just wonderful to be here. Well, we've, we've kind of been with you before already. Last year, we got to have a virtual meeting with you. I'm sure many of you may remember that. And i got to be careful here because I think I poked fun at Reed last time about something. So now that we're here, it's all on him if he wants to mess something up. So i got to, man, i got to tread carefully. But we're, we're thankful to be with you folks in person. Hope to meet many of you. Got to meet a few of you this morning already. Get to meet you in person. Get to know you and get to know our family. We're very thankful to be here. We are the Coates family going to Quebec. Uh, I should say, gone to Quebec, because we're already in Quebec, as I mentioned. We've been there since July of 2021. We were serving with Pastor Guillaume Roy in Église Baptiste de Saint-Augustin. It's in just outside of Quebec City, which is about two and a half hours from Montreal. Montreal is the hub. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm not a city guy. I, I don't like as much a city. I'm more from the country. Brother uh, Alcock and Attest, he came out to our place out in the country. Quebec is about eight and a half million people. Four million of them are in the greater Montreal area. So that tells you just how, how big Montreal is and how spaced out the rest of the province is. The biggest province in Canada. People say there's nothing bigger than Texas. Quebec is bigger than Texas, <laughs> landmass-wise. And to think that half of them are spread out, you know, it, it's very, very spacious. But, uh, you know, we're thankful to be, to be living up there, to be living with the French-speaking people of Quebec. Please pray, especially for my wife, as she doesn't speak as much French. Uh, she would say she speaks no French, so we need, we need to get uh, training on that. It's been difficult with twins and all that, but we're not here to, to talk too much about that. If you have kids, you understand. I, I have an equation I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use when people ask how it's going. Three kids, two parents, do the math. <laughs> if you have more than three kids, you understand, amen? But no, God, God's been good, and he's really been blessing our family. And, you know, we do need more support. We're at about 56% support. Um, again, go to our YouTube page for all the details, but we moved to Quebec early uh, through all the circumstances happening in this country, and 
you know, even with, with COVID, and, you know, I kind of hate saying that nowadays with just, and, you know, we're not going to get into it. We're not going to get political here, but it's, it's been rough. It's been a rough two years. But God used some of those bad circumstances to get us to Quebec soon. It's just an amazing testimony of how God worked. And we're so thankful to, to be there, to be serving with Pastor Wah. And as uh, Pastor Alcock said, just a very needy province. Um, it's a very different culture. Uh, it's one of those things, I honestly don't know how to describe it, but even just being here in, in Ontario for a day, being in a hotel, there's just, there's just a different feel between Quebec and Ontario. And if you've been to Quebec or if you spend any amount of time there, you, you understand it. You understand how it's kind of hard to describe, but it is very different, a very dark uh, province, very Catholic traditionally, but nowadays people are very secular. Very few attend the Catholic Church, and if they do, it's Christmas and Easter perhaps. It's very uh, ritualistic. It's not, you know, they do it because historically they're Catholic. Their parents were Catholic, but they don't practice Catholic faith. They don't, they don't care about it. They're very secular, very... Um, sinful and sensual there in, in Quebec, and so a very tremendous need for the gospel that changes lives, and praise the Lord it does, and we praise the Lord that it works in every language, amen? It's, it's the word of God, and it's the spirit of God. It's not, it's not us. And, you know, I'm very thankful that the Lord chooses to use us in Quebec, and I pray that he would use us, but ultimately it's the Lord working through us. Uh, sometimes churches will ask us what's the greatest need we have or how they can pray for us, and, and I'll share this as a request. Pray that God would be with us. You know, we do need support. As I mentioned, we have 56% support. And I pray that, I praise the Lord that he's been meeting our needs. We haven't been without. God's been, been so wonderful to meet our needs. You know, if we go back to Quebec in June without any more support than we have now, it'll, it'll be okay because we're going to be a blessing as well. And God has taken care of us. But our greatest need is that God would be with us. You know, I've said if we go to Quebec with 100% support, you know, a million dollars in the bank, no financial worries, everything's good, I can get that snowmobile and go across the lake in the winter. And, you know, we have all of it, no needs, and we don't have God. It's worthless. You might as well close your wallets right now because if God's not with us, it's in vain. So pray that the Lord would be with us. Pray that God would work through his spirit and through his word in Quebec, that that word that changes lives would be abundant in Quebec because without that, we're wasting our time. And I don't want to waste my time, and I don't want to waste your time. So pray that God would truly do a work through our family and in Quebec. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're very thankful to be here. We'd love to uh, share more with you about our family as we're, we're here and get to know us. We have uh, three kids, Lydia, who is two, and the two twins, Etienne and Matthias, that are about almost six months old now. You'll probably see them. Well, Lydia running around, the twins being carried around, but uh, you'll get to see them and their smiling faces. And we, we thank you so much for inviting us allowing us to be here, to be a part of your service today, to be a part of your Missions Month. I'm thankful for churches that have Missions Month. Um, not, not so much a day or a conference, but a whole month. A whole month to dedicate, to focus on missions. And in reality, every Sunday is Missions Sunday, and the fact of missions is not some thing that takes place outside the walls of this church in other countries. Missions is the daily life of a Christian, to be a testimony, to be a sharer, a proclaimer of the truth. You can be a missionary wherever you go. A missionary is just to go with a mission of proclaiming the gospel, and we can all do it. And it's not something, and we, again, we praise the Lord for a focus on it, but it's not to say, well, the rest of the year, we don't worry about it. And, and I know that's not true in this church. I know you are a missions-minded church, $82,000. Praise the Lord for that. That's a blessing. That, that is a wonderful um, thing that the Lord has allowed you as a church to do to help missionaries. It's a, it's a daily, weekly thing, and we praise the Lord for that. If you would take your Bibles, open up to 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy in chapter number 4. As I mentioned, we're going we're gonna to look at truth today, and really, maybe not so much a strictly missions-focused message, but it definitely has a missions emphasis in it, because missions is pointless without the truth of the Word of God. I, I wanted to perhaps one time develop a message where the thought was we need to not become disconnected from what missions really is. It, we, it needs to not be some, some thing out there that we need to attain to, but we, need, we can't separate missions from what missions is, sharing the truth of, you know, I would ask you this morning, are you saved? Has, God, has God's word changed your life? Yes. Are you saved by the blood? Have you been forgiven? Do you have that, that joy and that peace and you have everything in Christ. Sinner saved by grace. Think, think of 
the, the, the amazingness of the sacrifice of God and think of him shedding his blood for you and, and the joy and the peace. And missions is just bringing that to everyone. That's all missions is. We cannot become disconnected from what missions truly is. And it's nothing without truth. We're going to look at truth today in 2 Timothy chapter 4. We got Easter coming up. And there's a story told of two brothers getting ready to boil some eggs to color for Easter. And the older brother told the younger he'd give him a dollar if he could break three raw eggs on his head. What a big brother, right? What a big brother's for if not to torture their younger brothers, right? I have a younger brother. And the younger brother said, do you promise? And the older brother said, I promise. So gleefully, the older boy broke two eggs over his brother's head. The younger boy, standing stiff for fear of the gooey mess that would get all over him, asked, when's the third egg coming? He said, that's not. That would cost me a dollar. He didn't tell the truth. We have a pandemic of lying, I think, going on in the world. Adrian Rogers said, if you take part of the truth and try to make that part of the truth all of the truth, that part of the truth becomes an untruth. And you might think I'm going to stand and talk about COVID, but you know what? I'm not going to talk about COVID because the idea that I had for this message came way before that. I don't know if you know the name Kanye West, one of the, a, a rapper in the world, but back in 2019, he claimed to profess Christ. I don't know if you, you heard of that. And, you know, as a Christian, we look at that and we think, is that the truth? Is that not the truth? We, we don't know. What's the truth? If you know the name Benny Hinn, a prosperity gospel, you know, smack you on the forehead and heal you, you know, false preacher, that, I don't know if you heard a couple years ago, denounced the prosperity gospel and said, this is wrong to preach the gospel for money and it's wrong. And again, is that true? Is that just another act? What's the truth? And there, there's so much. And, you know, think about any example you want, you want to put in, in the world. And I saw a, a little video someone did, a, a drive through thought they had to where, what, what's truth anymore? You can Google anything and find any information or study to support any point of view. And he did an example. Does coffee cause blindness? Studies have shown to prove that three cups of coffee a day can help, you know, increase the potential to, to go blind. Okay, Google. Can coffee improve your eyesight? Studies have shown to prove that coffee can improve your eyesight. What's true? What is true in this world anymore? The only truth that we can rely on is this book we have right here, the Word of God. It is the only truth. And it's the truth that is the most hated and the most slandered in our world today. We're living in a day in which the truth has never been more hated and never more desperately needed. We talk about the gospel. We talk about missions. We talk about salvation. We talk about wanting to see revival. And I'm praying for revival and in this country. But it cannot happen without the truth. Stating the truth today is insensitive. If the truth doesn't align with someone's opinions or political motivations, it's hated. The world screams at us that truth is relative. But when we state a truth that they don't agree with, it's wrong and it's dangerous. Think of that disgusting man that won a woman's swimming race. Oh, but to call him a man, you're, you're hateful. The truth is so hated today. and We need it. But, you know, I want to, at the beginning, remind us of the fact that we need to speak the truth in love. That's hard to do. Jesus Christ was full of grace and truth. And I, I look at that and I think, Lord, teach me. <laughs> Sometimes we're way too gracious. Sometimes we're way too truthful. We need to have a little bit of love. We just need to follow the advice of George Bernard Shaw that said, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh. Otherwise, they'll kill you. Yikes. I challenge you today, will you stand for the truth in this day and age? Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1. Paul is speaking here to Timothy. He's at the end of his life, and Paul realizes this. If we looked later in verse 6, I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. So he's giving the last charge to the young pastor, Timothy. And what did he tell him? He said in verse 1 of 2 Timothy 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. 
but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Let's open this morning in a word of prayer. Dear Lord and our Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, seeking your help, seeking, Lord, the filling of your Holy Spirit as your word goes forth to, Lord, may you be the preacher today. Would you shine forth your truth in our hearts, Lord, that we may learn, that we may be encouraged and challenged to do more for missions because we need the truth in this world. Lord, be the speaker today. and May you be honored and glorified, we pray in your name. Amen. We're going to look today at four aspects of the truth that we must understand. The first, number one, is that the truth cannot be declined. And it's going to seem a little counterintuitive, perhaps, until we, we, we get through the whole message. So I, I hope I'll, this will be clear. I hope you'll stay with me through the message. But the truth cannot be declined. Look what it says in verse number one. Paul charges Timothy before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Maranatha. You know what Maranatha means? It's a greeting with them meaning, behold, he cometh. The Lord is coming. It says, at his appearing in his kingdom. That is coming soon. And the Lord is coming for his people to gather the church, but also to bring judgment. He shall judge the quick and the dead. You see, the truth is, judgment is coming. Judgment on this wicked world. Judgment on sinners. It says in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Judgment. It's coming. It cannot be escaped. The truth cannot be declined. Facts do not cease to exist because they are ignored. The truth is still the truth. You may have heard the story of uh, Lincoln who asked, okay, how many legs does a cow have? And someone said four, okay. And then he asked, what if you count the tail as a leg? And someone said five. Well, no, even if you call it a leg, the truth is it still only has four legs, whatever you call it. The truth cannot be declined. It, it does not change. Philippians 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, being Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise the Lord. Well, think of that. One day, every single human being that lives and ever has lived will bow before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and profess him to be Lord. What a powerful moment that will be. Judgment. You cannot escape the truth. You cannot decline the truth. It's coming. How many of you have ever been frustrated at those user agreements you have to install on your computer and you have to accept all? You don't read it anyway, so who cares, right? But there, there's, no, there's no neglect option. You, you can't deny it. You can't decline it. You decline it, you can't install the program. No option. That's the way it is with the truth. There, there's no plan B. There's no escape. People want to live their life thinking, I can go my own way. I can live my own life. I live for myself. I live for money. There is no God. Go away, you Christians. They cannot escape the truth that judgment is coming. Someone said, better a cruel truth than a comfortable delusion. And you know, we're not trying to be cruel. We're not trying to go and bring doom and judgment on this world. Again, we must speak the truth in love. It says in 1 Timothy 2, 4, about Jesus, he will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. You see, the reality is judgment is coming. It cannot be escaped. But we must not, must not use that as a tool to, to go and condemn the world, but to go and, and plead with the world and say, you might not believe it, but the truth is, one day there is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And there is a judgment coming, and it is coming soon, and we must go with this truth this, this reality that the truth cannot be declined, that judgment is coming, it can't be escaped, and we must plead with the world. God wants you to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish. He's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Think about that truth we, we heard of this morning. God's word changes lives, and it's changed our lives, and we're sinners saved by grace. You know, I think often, though, we, we, we get too much sometimes on the truth side, and we think, you know, the, the God's mercies and long-suffering to them word. God is long-suffering to Justin Trudeau and 
George Soros and Klaus Schwab and Joe Biden. Yeah, God's long-suffering to them for sure. Peter was speaking to Christians and said long-suffering to us word. God's patient with you and me. Think of that. Before we, before we cast the first stone, before we, we, we go with judgment, yes, there is judgment, but the reality is God was patient with us. We don't deserve salvation. We are, we're here, we're saved, and, and I hope you have peace. I hope you have joy in your heart as we look around this world that, you know, everything is freaking the world out right now, and, and, and not to, to be, people are freaked out right now because of everything, Ukraine and, and COVID and, and freedom going in, but we can come here as a body of Christ and say, oh, we have peace in our heart. We have joy in our heart. We can rejoice. There's areas we need to be careful, yes, and I'm not trying to say anything on one side or the other, but we have joy, and we need to bring that joy because we don't deserve that. God was long-suffering to us. Word. But the truth can't be declined. Secondly, this morning, the truth must be declared. Verse 2, preach the word. Don't preach your opinion. Don't preach what you think. Don't, don't preach a good message. Do as Philip did to the Ethiopian eunuch and preached unto him Jesus. I love that verse. In Acts 6, when, when Philip was taken to the desert, he was taken away from a revival, from a great working of the Lord in Samaria, and he went to the desert for one man. He said, Philip said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, How can I except some man should guide me? And Philip joined up, and it says, And he preached unto him Jesus. That's all we have to do. We don't have to, you know, homiletics is great, and if you have taken or are going through homiletics, you know, and it's good, and then developing a message, but you know what? At the end of the day, just get up or just sit down before someone, just open up your Bible and just share Jesus with them. Don't worry about what people think of you. Don't worry about if you're, you're eloquent. You, you know, I've noticed over the years, you, you've probably had a lot of preachers, and some of them are, you know, the Al Stones and, you know, the Scott Paulies and the Kurt Skellies that are like, you're at the edge of your seat, like, wow, he can preach. And then you got some that are, you know, just kind of, okay. And you know what? Sometimes the quieter people I found have the biggest heart for souls. You, you don't have to be some fantastic, charismatic person. Just share Christ. Just declare the truth. Just go in love to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to your unsaved family, and just preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. We are pretty much out of season and have been for the past couple of years. Now is the time to declare the truth to this world. The Lord said that the truth shall make you free. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Praise the Lord for that. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's missions month. The truth needs to be declared. Are we fulfilling our part of the Great Commission to declare the truth? You know, I, man, I'm so thankful for the Word of God. And yes, we need to understand the Bible in context and Paul speaking to Timothy and all that. But at the end of the day, this is efficient for us as well. Though Paul was speaking directly to Timothy, we can take these words and we can take them as the Lord speaking to us, as the Lord speaking to each one of you individually. Preach the Word. Share, share, the, share a Bible verse with your coworker. Share that, that Bible verse on social media. Share the truth. Don't be ashamed. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. God's word changes lives, as we saw a song this morning. Preach the word. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We have the truth. George Orwell said, in a time of deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. It's not very well loved today. People are have their Twitter accounts banned for saying a man who thinks he's a woman is really a man. It's not popular today. Don't shy away from the truth. Adrian Rogers said, it's better to be divided by truth than to be united in error. It's better to speak a truth that hurts and then heals than a falsehood that comforts and then kills. Think about that. That's powerful. The truth can hurt sometimes, but the point is, it heals. The Bible says the word of God is a two-edged sword, and it's often been said that, you know, the one side cuts, and the other side heals. Sinners hearing, you are a sinner destined for hell. That hurts. That's hurtful. But the end of it heals, saying there is salvation in Christ. And it's better to have a truth that hurts at the beginning, but then heals, than a falsehood that makes you feel good and kills you in the end. 
It's better to be hated for telling the truth than to be loved for telling a lie. It's better to stand alone with the truth than to be wrong with a multitude. It's better to ultimately succeed with the truth than to temporarily succeed with a lie. We need the truth and we need to declare the truth in this world. And I hope as a need for truth is around the world, it's, it's in Quebec, but that's not to say it's not here in Ontario, in Toronto, in the, in the Brampton, Mississauga area. It's not to say that it's not in British Columbia. It's not to say it's not in China. It's around the world. It's a universal need. And I hope you're praying for laborers. I hope as you have a missions emphasis and that this missions emphasis wouldn't just end today and you go on with your regular life, that this would stir your hearts to move forward, continually being burdened for missions, continually being burdened for, for our country, for Canada, that is in such desperate need for laborers. I was sharing with your pastor last night just my burden in, in seeing so many pastors, and we praise the Lord for American pastors that have come, and if we were to count, I believe many here today, pastoring are from the States, but there are some who in recent years have gone back to the States for whatever reason. We need more Canadian laborers. We need more people to rise up from our own country, from our own churches. We need people in churches just like this to say, Lord, here am I, send me, as Isaiah said. We need people who will, who will say, you know, the aspect of, of missions can involve me, not just to pray, not just to give, but maybe to go yourself, to go and say, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, but how shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear of him of whom they, how shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? There's not a lot of missionaries traveling in Canada right now. I can think of maybe on one hand, Canadian missionaries traveling in Canada, going to Canada. One of the things that burdened me at a young age for Canada was seeing missionaries going, and not to say we should stop, we should continue to send missionaries around the world, but I was burdened that if we fail to reach our country, there will be no more churches to send them. We need churches here. We need laborers here. We need the truth to be declared in our country here. What will you do today at the end of this missions month, but at the start of this new year, 2022, what will you do for missions this year? What will you do for the, the going forth of the truth of God's word this year? Will you give more? How shall they preach except they be sent? We need to send missionaries. We, we need to see them go around the world. We need to, to see them raise their support so they can get to the field. Will you give so truth can go? Or will you go yourself? Will you say, here am I, send me? The harvest is great. The laborers are, you, are few. Pray ye therefore. And said, it's the one prayer request the Lord gave. Are you praying on the Lord's behalf? People give a prayer request and you say, oh, I'll be praying for you. Do we? The Lord gave a prayer request. Are, are we praying for his prayer request? If the Lord were to come as a missionary and, hey, have you been praying for that prayer request I gave you? What would we say? I hope you're praying for labor so the truth would be declared. We see third this morning, the truth. We saw number one, it cannot be declined. But third, the truth will be denied. Verses three and four, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. People are in denial. In this world, they deny the truth. Someone said there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to believe what is true. So many people deny. John wrote to the believers in 1 John chapter 2, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He's the he is antichrist that denieth the Father and Son. There's so much denial in this world today. In 2 Timothy 3, it talks about how in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves and denying the truth. We don't have time to go through all these verses, but if you have a pen handy, I'll give you some references you can look at later to, to see passages that talk about the truth being denied. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 8. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 8. 2 Peter 2, verses 1 and 2. 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2. I'll read some verses here. Next one you write down, Isaiah 59. I'll read these verses and 
in Isaiah 59 says, None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. You can write down Jeremiah 5, verses 1 through 3. Jeremiah 5, 1 through 3, you have Jeremiah 9, and I'll read these verses here, Jeremiah 9, 3 through 6. They bend their tongues like their bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. They know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. They will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Think about that. Through deceit they refuse. People refuse. People deny the truth. They are of their father the devil, it says in John 8. The lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Lies, deceit, denial. Another passage you can write down, Romans 1, verse 18 and verse 25. When it says of man, they change the truth of God into a lie. One last passage, 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 5. 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 5. Some verses you can look at later. And and I pray that if you would read those verses, that they would stir your heart just to see the, the, the word of God that speaks of people denying, refusing, going their own way, going after their own lust, refusing to believe in the truth, refusing to believe in the Lord. The truth that cannot be declined. The truth that we need to declare. As we end this morning... Number four, the truth requires dedication. Dedication. Verse number five, Second Timothy 4, it says, But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Paul said to Timothy, Hey, Timothy, preach the word. There's going to be mockers. There's going to be scoffers. There's going to be deniers. There's going to be haters. There's going to be persecutors. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be affliction. Keep on keeping on, Timothy. Keep on pressing forward. Do not fall from the truth, Timothy. Do not stop. That is the message that we must receive today in the beginning of 2022 here in Canada in these truly perilous times that, that we are in. And it's, you know, we, we can look in fear at all that is coming and all the persecution that may be coming. We had, back in January, police come and interrupt our service in Quebec and tell us to leave, that it was an illegal service. And we praise the Lord for his protection through that. We praise the Lord for how that turned out. But, you know, the truth is, persecution may be coming in Canada. And no, it's not going to look the same as it will in other countries. We may not necessarily have our lives at risk. But that's not to say it's not persecution. That's not to say there won't be consequences. The Bible says, yea, they that shall live godly shall suffer persecution, not might shall. My pastor has often mentioned that these last few years has indicated in the churches a fear of suffering. And that that applies to me. I don't want to suffer. The truth requires dedication. Requires commitment. Requires us to say, Lord, your truth shall stand. Your truth is the only truth. And Lord, we will stay faithful to your truth and your word. You know, and we, we can look around and we can see people who have fallen into apostasy, people who have left the truth, and we think, how can we stay in the truth? And it's just by staying in the truth, by keeping on the straight and narrow, by looking ahead and looking to Christ and and not wavering. If you just keep doing the right thing and you keep moving forward in the truth, you won't have to worry about falling from the truth. We need the truth. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.14, Stand therefore having your lords girt about with truth. 
And as we know, the illustration of a soldier given, the soldier was, was useless for battle if he didn't have his loins girt about. It was that, that belt, if you will, that held everything together so he could have free movement in battle. And if he didn't have that, he could have nothing. To speak of a, a soldier without his, his girdle properly equipped was failure. And so it is for us with truth. Having is a statement of what is to be done before the soldier takes his stand. Stand there for having your loins. If we're to stand against the wiles of the devil, if we're to stand in this truth-denying world, we need to already have the truth. We need to be standing fast. We need to be dedicated in the truth. We need to be dedicated and committed now that when trials come, when tribulations come, we've already made the commitment and the decision to stand for the truth. Will you be faithful in the truth? Proverbs 12, 19 says, The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. We are facing troubling times. You know, I think of the freedoms we have enjoyed, and I think of the sacrifice that was given by many in the, the previous years that had helped us have this freedom. And I think we're in and coming in an age where that'll be us for the next generation. Where will our kids hear the truth? Where will the next generation, where will your grandkids find the truth if we don't take a stand now? And that's not to say, you know, we need to trust the Lord. That's not to say fists in the face of the government fighting, but that's to say just staying true to the Lord, staying faithful to the Lord, staying dedicated for the truth, committed to it so that the truth can continue to go forth in this world. It's been said that hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And there's a cycle, and look over the past 200 years, how true that is. I think we're seeing the results of weak men, and we're seeing hard times. Stay faithful to the truth of God's word so that it can make us strong so that the truth of God's word through his word and through his Holy Spirit would go forth into this world. It would be here, it would be in Quebec, across Canada, it would be around the world. Are you dedicated? Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Whatever may come in the months and years to come, will it be said of you that you remain faithful to the truth so that your grandkids can hear? so that missionaries can continue to go around the world. And again, we praise the Lord for Missions Month and, and what we see. Where will we be in five years in regards to missions here in Canada or around the world? Where, where will that 82,000 be yearly? How many missionaries will you be supporting in five years? How many missions prayer letters will you be able to read in five years if we don't take a stand for the truth, if we don't stay dedicated to the truth now? Oh, will you stand for the truth? Will you declare the truth? Will you be faithful? Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we come before you today, Lord, humbled by your word. Lord, humbled by those who have gone before us. We, we think of, Lord, the greatest missionary of all time, Paul. And Lord, the truth. And Lord, we think of the Adoniram Judsons and Hudson Taylors. And Lord, the men who have gone before and even those who have helped establishing churches here in Canada. And we think of those who have stood for the truth. And now the burden is on us, Lord, as your people. To stand on the truth, Lord, so we can continue to see missions continue on in this country and around the world. Lord, we pray for laborers. We pray for more missionaries. Lord, I pray if there be any in this room today or any listening on live stream, Lord, that you are touching their hearts for missions, that you are giving the call, who shall I send and who will go for us, Lord, that there would be someone even today that would say, here am I, send me. Lord, may we be faithful and dedicated whatever may come, Lord, through your spirit, through your empowerment, to stay faithful, dedicated to the truth. Lord, thank you that you give us that power through your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are the one who helps us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Would you work now in hearts, Lord, we ask in your name. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, we'll have the, the piano softly to play. I'll hand it over to Pastor in a minute, but would you right now just ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do for the truth? I pray for more missionaries. I pray for more laborers. The reality is, not every one of you can go because if you all went, there'd be no one to support them. 
That's where the Holy Spirit comes into play, to, to individually speak to hearts, to show you what your part is. I know there's many in this church who are faithfully praying. It's, it's nothing without prayer. Prayer is not the least you can do. It's the most you can do. So in the quiet of this moment, just ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do for missions, for truth? And may it be the Lord guiding you. Pastor. Dear Jesus, thank you for another day you've given to us and for another opportunity we have had to hear your message preached this morning. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to be faithful to the truth. We live in a world that we see around us tearing down truth and things that are absolute. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to cherish the truth, to proclaim the truth, to live the truth. And Lord, we're so thankful that we have access to it, and all men can. And Lord, I pray that you help us uh, to have a mind uh, like yours, to declare it, uh, Lord. And we definitely, uh, in the message, we have witnessed those things ourselves. People have declined it and not wanting it, but Lord, help us to be dedicated to it. Uh, Lord, I pray you bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you've certainly been challenged about the truth. And we do live in a world that is tearing, tearing it down. It doesn't matter where you're watching us online. I know there's folks from around the world who watch our services. Uh, everywhere you go in the world, truth is being torn down. So let's uh, make sure we endeavor to be faithful to the truth. Brother Coates, head on back so the folks can greet you as you go out. And uh, I don't know if all his babies would be there. But uh, <laughs> they're around at any rate, and his dear wife as well. And uh, please do say hello. They're going to be here tonight, but our, our kids get to enjoy them tonight. Uh, they're going to be over in our kids' church uh, this evening at 5. And uh, I thought he was going to preach my message there for a little bit from Revelation, because that's where I'm going tonight. So I uh, hope you'll be back for 5 p.m. in person or online. Thank you for being here, and God bless. Mm -hmm.